What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping in with some Destiny 2 news, and it is Thursday, so this is coming in the form of this week at Bungie, actually a really early twab today, and it doesn't contain an absolutely massive list of info, but the info that we get is pretty useful, so Bungie give us something of a roadmap for the season, with some important dates and events to look forward to over the course of the next couple of months. So that's pretty cool, but also they jump in and talk about some changes they're going to be making to crafting, and specifically crafting materials, both a few things that they'll be doing in the near future, and that includes a new patch that we'll be getting next week, but also some adjustments that they're going to make in future seasons. Plus we'll round up a few changes and things they're going to be doing in season 17, and there's more to discuss in the video. So as always guys, I hope you enjoy this one. If you do, a rating below really does help us out, but now let's get into it. They start out in the twab by talking about some of the content that we've seen over the past few weeks as well as the story content from this week. But then they get into talking about some important dates and upcoming events this season. So they say we're just a few days away from our one month anniversary of the Witch Queen. Some of you have blasted your way through the legendary campaign, while others are still dabbling in side quests and secrets throughout the Throne World patrol area. We've still got a few months of Season of the Risen left, so there's no rush in completing content. But if you're wondering what's coming over the next few weeks, we'd like to plant a few dates on your calendar for things to look forward to. We have some Iron Banner dates to share, raid challenges to complete, and Guardian games coming towards the end of the season. As a quick note, dates are subject to change, and we're also planning a few Gambit Labs weeks to sprinkle in, but want to let the dust settle from balance changes introduced at the launch and a few tuning changes and bug fixes that are coming online. But for important dates, they point out that this week is the Iron Banner and the new PsyOps Battlegrounds location. For March 22nd though, Legend PsyOps Battlegrounds will become available, as well as the Vow of the Disciple raid challenges, so that'll be on next week's reset. For April the 1st, we're going to see Trials Labs Zone Capture, and then immediately for April 5th, we can see Grandmaster Nightfalls will become available. But there'll be more Trials Labs that week on Friday, with Trials Labs Freelance. Then we'll see the return of the Iron Banner on April the 12th. And then on the following week, April 19th, we'll see the Vow of the Disciple Master difficulty. So that's in about a month's time. That'll be pretty cool. But also that week on April 22nd, we'll see Trials Lab Zone Capture. And starting on May the 3rd, running up until May 24th, will be the Guardian Games event for 2022. But we're also going to see Trials Labs Freelance with a community voted map. And that'll be on May the 6th. And then the final Iron Banner of the season on May 10th with Trials Labs Freelance and Zone Capture returning on May 20th. So primarily events and of course a couple of bits of content such as Master Difficulty and Grandmasters. Let us know any that you're looking forward to down below. And they also say stay tuned to the next week in Destiny cards that pop up in the game for more hints on weekly content. Moving on though they speak about crafting and they say let's talk trait element caps. And over the past few weeks Guardians have been crafting some spicy weapon rolls at the Enclave on Mars Patterns have been discovered, traits have been enhanced, and exotic glaives have been shaped. They go on to say next week on Tuesday, there'll be a hotfix with a few minor changes and some commentary on feedback items that the team will be looking to address in future patches and tune in passes. They say one piece of feedback in particular deals with crafting element caps, and some players have been maxing out their elements frequently. So starting next Tuesday with Hotfix 4004, they'll be increasing element caps from 250 to 1000. And for neutral element, the cap will move from 8,500 to 10,000. And so that in itself will be useful, and it'll mean we can collect more of those materials and let them stack up. But they go on to say next season, we're removing ruinous, adroit, mutable, drowned, and energetic elements, and only neutral elements will remain. The initial goal for these currencies was to sustain the interest in non-crafted weapon drops and to retain the chase of weapons with well-rolled perks in a post-crafting D2. While not the only reasons we're removing the specific currencies, there were two design changes pre-launch which made elements ineffectual. We initially had a currency per trait perk, so for example to craft with the Rampage you needed a weapon with Rampage. However, due to technical and usability issues with too many currencies to track, we opted to heavily simplify the element currencies to the handful we shipped at launch. Launch, and this unfortunately resulted in a decreased interest in chasing specific trait perk elements. And so they are going to be removed. But additionally, they say Ascendant Alloys, the exotic quality crafting material that can be found through high end content or purchased from Raoul for a high price, made the remaining condensed elements obsolete. And the Ascendant Alloy currency was added after we'd already condensed the elements, and we were unable to resolve the experiential issues between these two currencies prior to launch. 
Specific elements such as Ruinous and an Adroit became redundant and in some cases in conflict with the Sen and Alloys and neutral elements. So once again, they are removing them altogether. And so give us your thoughts about that change, but they say since launch, they've been watching player conversation and keeping tabs on backend data. And while we don't have specifics to share on future changes, we did want to note a few areas that we're looking at. So they're looking to add more player control over deep site weapon unlocking of weapon patterns, but also continuing to monitor deep site weapon stockpiling, acquisition rates and progression, as well as resonant alloy acquisition rates and behavior. But on top of this, they're discussing feedback around reshaping costs for those who wish to experiment more frequently with their trait selections. And so I think definitely those are some positive changes. Absolutely, there is more feedback that players have about crafting, but the material element really didn't make an awful lot of sense at launch. So it is at least a positive that that's going to be simplified. And be sure to give us your thoughts down in the comments section, and I will keep you posted next week when we get an update there. And for that hotfix, they say next Tuesday, March 22nd, the hotfix will be released. And at 9am PDT, maintenance will begin, with D2 being bought offline at 9.45am, which is 15 minutes before the weekly reset. And then the hotfix will begin rolling out at 10am Pacific, which is 1700 UTC, with the maintenance concluding an hour later. But essentially that update should be there by weekly reset. Also from the TWAP though, they point out that Bunja Rewards Vow of Disciple Raid Jacket order period is ending soon, and players who completed the raid by March 15th will have until March 31st to order the jacket through the Bungie store. Definitely bear that in mind. They also have a list of known issues here, and they say armor offered by vendors has low stat rolls, and this includes tower vendors as well as Zer. They're looking into why that's happening. They're also continuing to investigate various error codes. Season 15 and 14 armor sets no longer being available to equip as ornaments, players not receiving trials rewards post-win, missing memento drops from trials, and a few other things. So as always, I'll keep you posted if we get further info. A few other things to talk about right here, and regarding the sandbox right now, there's quite a lot of feedback about Void 3.0 and how the sandbox is feeling inside of the Crucible. And Kevin Yanis from Bungie said, and now our watch begins, we'll be monitoring and gathering real hard data on how Void 3.0 plays over the next few weeks of trials and I am Banner. Any changes won't happen instantly, as we want to be measured in the swings we take, but essentially is saying that they are paying attention to the sandbox right now and making considerations for any potential adjustments in the future. There's definitely going to be a PvP element to Season 17 as well, and of course we're going to be seeing updates throughout the course of the year. Joe Blackburn had previously confirmed that Season 17 will come with a brand new map, and he also suggested that there are a bunch of environments in Destiny 2 that they want to start bringing into the Crucible, so it'll be interesting to see where that map is set, maybe a Europa or Throneworld PvP map. They've also said they'll have some adept reward changes coming for Season 17 for Trials, and we know that there'll be a rework of the Iron Banner, as well as new Origin traits and Foundry weapons added through the course of the year. So, of course, a few more changes to look forward to, but they'll be a little bit further down the road. And give us any thoughts about what you'd like to see in Season 17 below. But a final couple of things here. Drew Tucker from Bungie pointed out regarding Bungie name changes that there's no need to use the one name change immediately, as there's currently no expiration for that. They also point out that you can't change numbers and suggest that players don't skirt the line that could break the code of conduct or try to bypass filters, as any names like that will ultimately be found. And as we've mentioned, Bungie are still fixing a few bugs with name changes at the moment. Very final thing to mention right here, but the gunsmith's selling a pretty good crate roll, of course a new weapon for Season of the Risen, and for main traits, it does have subsistence and headstone. Plus, it's got a handling masterwork, arrowhead break, and corkscrew rifling, as well as a pendant mag and armor piercing rounds. So, if you've been after a decent one of those for PvE, especially, while it isn't necessarily the god roll, it's definitely a very good one for Gunsmith to sell. So I thought it was worth mentioning to you guys. But for now, that's everything we have to round up in the video today. So as always, I'll keep you guys posted with more info over the next few weeks. So be sure to get subscribed to the channel and you can turn on notifications if you don't want to miss out on any content. But otherwise, for now, thank you as always for tuning in and I'll catch you guys very soon.